Something you may have noticed about the periodic table is that it's separated into different columns. And these columns are actually groups or families that are related to one another. One way that they're related is that each of the columns has their highest energy electron in the same sublevel. Let me show you what I mean. If we take a look at hydrogen, we know that hydrogen has only one electron. And so it would have 1s1 as its electron configuration. If we look over here at helium, helium would have an electron configuration of 1s2 because it has two electrons. Let's go over to lithium. Now lithium would have the full 1s sublevel and so it would have two electrons in the 1s. I'm not going to bother to write that. I'll just go ahead and write its highest energy to electron, which would be in the second energy level, and it would be in the s sublevel, so it would be 2s1. Let's take a look at beryllium now. Beryllium's highest energy to electron would also be in the 2s, and the last thing we would write in beryllium's electron configuration would be 2s2. If we kept on moving through the periodic table, we'd come to boron. The last thing we would write in boron's electron configuration would be 2p1 to account for its five electrons. If you notice, boron has everything that the previous elements had plus its highest energy electron. We can keep on going. Let's move to sodium, just so you can see the trend here. Sodium has 11 electrons. You can see that right here. And if we followed off Bohr's principle, we could start writing the electron configuration for sodium. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. That's accounted for 10 of sodium's electrons. The next thing we would write is 3s1, and that accounts for all of sodium's electrons. We can see that this is the highest level electron. Let's go ahead and put that on the periodic table. And you may start to see a trend. If we continued down this first column here, we'd actually see that everything in this column is going to end with S1. They all have one electron in the S sublevel for their highest energy level electron. We can actually separate the periodic table into certain blocks. And we call this first block right here, this one right here, we call the S block because everything in this block has its highest energy level electron in the S block. Let's take a look at how we could separate the periodic table here based on those blocks. And you can see the different blocks here pretty clearly. We have the S block here in blue. So the highest energy electron will always be in the S sublevel here. We have the D block in the middle the P block and the F block. This may help to see it even clearer. In this periodic table I've labeled all the different columns with what those elements would end in for their electron configuration. So for example if I took this second column right here all of these elements the last thing we would write in their electron configuration is S2. For beryllium it would be 2S2. For magnesium it would be 3S2 and so on. So you can see this is a way to help us write those electron configurations. Let me show you the electron configuration for magnesium, just to prove that this works. If I look at magnesium here on the periodic table, I can see it's in row 3. This is the third row. So right away, I know that the electron configuration for magnesium is going to end in 3s2. So all we have to do is fill in the rest of magnesium's electron configuration to see if we're right. Everything is always going to start with 1s, and we have two electrons in the s sublevel. And remember, magnesium has 12 electrons here. 2s2 will come next, and then 2p6 after that. And if I count up all the electrons here, you can see that I have 12 electrons. And this is the electron configuration for magnesium.